flask. Is this flask empty or is this flask full? All right, nothing comes out when I pour it out. Is it full or empty? It's full of air. In this video, we're going to learn about something called the ideal gas law. Now, in that opening clip, we talked about there's air in that flask. So if we look at the flask, it's full. It's full of gases, little tiny moles and moles and moles and millions and billions of little gas particles flying around. But just as a note, what is in the flask? specifically besides gas particles. Well, here on Earth, primarily we find oxygen, remember O2, it's a diatomic molecule, and N2. And most people think, oh, the air is filled with oxygen, but you may not know this, but nitrogen is 79% of the atmosphere, oxygen is about 20% of the atmosphere, and there's about 1% of gases that are other gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and many other gases. So most of our atmosphere is actually nitrogen gas. Now let's talk about this idea of an ideal gas. What does that mean, ideal? What's ideal, ideal? Ideal would be like something that's perfect, right? Well, it, the ideal gas is actually something that doesn't really exist. We actually can talk about real gases and ideal gases. So we make two big assumptions about an ideal gas. We assume that the gases, so let's say this is an oxygen molecule and this is another oxygen molecule, that they have no attraction for each other. So this oxygen is not attracted to this oxygen. There's no, there's no bond between them. Now you can make an oxygen gas a real gas if there was attraction and the way to do that is if you cool it down and cool it down and cool it down you could actually liquefy oxygen or if they get cold enough, very very cold, um, then they can even solidify. So uh, there's no attraction and that's true by and large, you know, at a room temperature on the planet because the oxygen molecules are not attracted to each other. And the second thing is, is that they have what we call completely elastic collisions. Now what that means is when they do, boom, pop into each other, they bounce. They bounce where no energy is lost. That's actually a pretty good assumption. So sometimes these molecules, they, they whack into each other and then they, they bounce off. So those are the two assumptions. Note that there really is no such thing as an ideal gas, but it's close enough for all intents and purposes. Now the ideal gas law is a mathematical equation. So let's kind of dive into this idea of it being a mathematical equation. It's actually a derivation, as we learned in the last video, if you will, of the, the uh, combined gas law. What you recall is P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. And ultimately it's actually, and, and, and as you'll learn, there's actually an N in here. The N being um, the number of moles. And let me kind of just put some numbers in here if we think about this. So if we're at like standard temperature and pressure, if we make P1 to be one atmosphere, so I'm plugging in P1 for one atmosphere here, right? And I do a volume of uh, 22.4 liters. There's 22.4 liters per mole at one atmosphere divided by N1, we would say one mole, very simple numbers, right? And we divide by uh, standard temperature, which is 273 Kelvin. We convert to Kelvin. And then I go over here to my trusty dusty calculator and I take uh, 222.4 and divide by 273. I get a very interesting number. I get this comes 0 0.0821. We put an R here, we can say R is equal to PV over NT and we can rearrange this equation and we can say PV equals NRT. This equation will become your friend in chemistry land. This is the ideal gas law. PV equals N pressure times volume equals NRT. Now a couple notes here is that when you work on this, if you note this here, liters at prefers mole Kelvin. So R's units will be liters ATM divided by mole K. Now, whenever you are using the ideal gas law, you have to always use ATMs, you always have to use liters, and you always have to use Kelvin. 
and as long as you use this R. There's actually other R's if we change the units, but this is the one that in our class that we're gonna almost always exclusively use. Now let's do a couple of examples. So as you can see, we've got a container. I'll just make it a box, right? And it contains 0.25 moles of a gas. The volume is 2.35 liters. So this is equal to N, this is equal to V, and its temperature is equal to 45 degrees Celsius. So I wanna add 273 to that. That's 11, 318, so this is 318 Kelvin. My equation, if you recall, PV equals NRT. P is my variable, I don't know the P, but I know the V, V is 2.35 liters. I'm not gonna put the numbers in, I'll just do it at the end. N is 0.25 moles. R is 0.0821 and T here is 318. So I divide both sides to solve for P by 2.35, 2.35. The 2.35s cancel, so on my calculator, so on my calculator, I'm gonna take 0.25 times 0 0.0821 times 318 divided by 2.35. And I end up with 2.77. So P is equal to 2.77 ATM. Got to be in atmospheres because the pressure is always in atmospheres and the PV equals NRT. Let's do another example. So you can read the question here. We have 15.35 grams of ammonia, it's in a two liter container, a pressure of 925. They're asking for what's the t temperature. Now here's a bit of a tricky question is we've got to try to figure out all the things. So let's, let's do P. P, right, the equation is gonna be, you know, PV equals NRT. So I'm just gonna do P, you know, V, N, R, T. So P equals 9, 25 millimeters of mercury. Now the trick on this is, remember, it has to be converted to ATMs. So you're gonna take 760 millimeters of mercury in one mole. The mole millimeters of mercury cancel, and we get our calculator. And I, I won't just show you this on the screen. I'll just grab the, grab the actual calculator. I'm just gonna take uh, 925 divided by 760. All right, and that's 1.27. ATMs. Now my volume, where's my volume? Oh, there it is right there, that's V, so that's just 2.0 liters. It's in liters, I'm happy. The, the moles, I don't, I don't know that yet. Let's see, R, that's 0 0.0821, that's always the same number, right? And the temperature is the actual question mark. So N is moles, but I have this number, 15.3 grams. So I'm gonna take 15.3 grams. Now you need to know ammonia, by the way, is NH3. So that's NH3, and that matters because we have to use the periodic table. I don't, I gotta get from grams to moles. To get from grams to moles, you then say that there are 17 grams of ammonia in one mole of ammonia. Now, how do I get that? Nitrogen weighs 14, hydrogen weighs one from the periodic table. So I'm gonna take 15.3 divided by 17. So 15.3 divided by 17 is equal to 0 0.90 moles. So there's my numbers, I've got P, V, N, R, but not T. So then I go here, PV equals NRT. I plug in my P, P was 1.27. V is two equals N, N was 0.9. R is 0 0.0821 and T is my X. I'm gonna divide then both sides by this team, the, the 0.9 and the 0.0821, so 0 0.9, 0 0.0821, 0 0.9, 0 0.0821, 0 0.0821. They cancel on this side, right? So I'm gonna take my calculator, take this times this, divided by this, divided by this. Now watch that, that's a little tricky on the calculator. So I plug this in the calculator, I take 1.27 times two divided by 0.9 divided by 0.0821 and I get T equals to 34 Kelvin. That's cold, but that's the answer that I get. So examples on how to do ideal gas law problems in class, you're gonna do some more, but basically PV equals NRT, you're gonna have to solve for some. Some of them will be a little tricky like this N where you gotta convert with some moles or something like that. Uh, temperature's always in Kelvin and the pressures or something, they may have to be converted to atmospheres, but it's not that hard. See you in class.